Glacier National Park covers a million acres of lakes and ponds, big rivers and small mountain streams, forests, meadows, and beaver dams, and of course, mountains and waterfalls. U.S. fisheries biologist Clint Mulfeld says it is one of the most biodiverse, intact aquatic ecosystems remaining in the country. Its waters are cold, clean, complex, and connected. Nearly all of Glacier National Park is managed as wilderness, roadless, and as wild and undisturbed as almost any place left in the lower 48 states. Adding in the adjacent Flathead National Forest brings the total land area to nearly 3.5 million acres of contiguous, protected public lands and waters, with nearly 2.5 million of those acres managed or designated as wilderness in Glacier National Park and the nearby Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex. To describe Glacier as an ecological treasure would be an understatement. Sitting at the crown of the continent, where the watersheds of the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, and Hudson Bay come together, and where numerous smaller climates and microclimates can be found, it is a place of great ecological diversity. The park is one of the few places left in the U.S. where 14 species of large native mammal can still be found. It is one of the largest remaining grizzly populations in Lower 48, and is vital habitat to both migrating and resident birds, including waterfowl, as well as tiny, rare keystone insect species, like the meltwater stonefly, found almost nowhere else in the world. As Mulfeld also notes, it represents one of the last and best habitats, strongholds and refugia, for the persistence of native cutthroat and bull trout. The full expression of life history and genetic diversity is very high, which is vitally important to adaptation and persistence in a changing climate. Many people are aware of the importance of large, contiguous areas of land and wildlife corridors needed for big and wide-ranging mammals such as elk, cougar, wolverine, and bear. More recent research has shown that many species of fish, including trout, also need a long corridors of protected habitat free from artificial barriers. Fisheries biologist Kurt Fausch, a pioneer in this research, has shown that even some small fish only three inches long may need to traverse 50 miles or more of river, crossing many boundaries to find all the habitats they need to complete their life cycle. Glacier National Park provides just such a vital habitat. As numerous stressors, including climate change, habitat loss, and invasive species, continue to threaten native fish, such as Montana's iconic West Slope cutthroat trout and threatened bull trout, this protected habitat is more important than ever. Nearly one-third of all the natural lake-dwelling populations of bull trout remaining in the United States are within Glacier National Park, and the park's high mountain lakes and streams, still isolated from other invasive trout, are also an important bastion for the native West Slope cutthroat. Christopher Downs, fisheries biologist with the National Park Service, describes the importance of the park succinctly. The crown of the continent ecosystem, stretching from southern British Columbia and Alberta down to Missoula, Montana, is vital to the long-term persistence of native bull and West Slope cutthroat trout. It is the last of the best. And the contiguous national park and national forest provide another important benefit as well. Both a natural environment where the species can be carefully studied and also a habitat that can be managed for both the protection of native species and, when necessary, also for the suppression of harmful invasives. The future of bull trout and West Slope cutthroat may rest in places like Glacier National Park and in the work being done there to understand and protect them. Of course, Glacier National Park provides one more benefit of immeasurable importance. It is a place where visitors can experience all of this beauty and ecological diversity. Kurt Fausch has suggested that native trout can return to streams only when people view their existence as essential to their lives, and this can only happen if we can see and touch these amazing creatures for ourselves.